if I were to show you these apples that were sliced and I were to ask you to tell me how this can be done, but you cannot tell me that a person sliced them with a knife. You know, I think a lot of people would be able to come with some different ideas. You know, um, especially if you had a group of people, they'd be able to come with a lot of different ideas. Maybe an apple slicer, maybe they use a slicer. You know, there could be a lot of different things. And the more, and, and then whenever these people were able to come up with the idea that they agreed on, they'd be able to come with more and more information that made it look as if what they have already concluded was true. But the problem is, what if it really was just cut by a person? And now these people are spending a lot of their energy, spending a lot of time coming up with a conclusion that is just trying to deny what was already obvious. Starting off on the wrong road, you never reach the right destination. In 2 Timothy 3 and 7, Paul speaks of people who are always learning but never coming to the knowledge of truth. Now, this is what the evolutionists do. They start off on the wrong road. They start with the answer already. And if their answer is wrong, then all of the work that they put in is towards this wrong answer, towards proving this wrong answer. So like these sliced apples, the people who are now dedicated to finding a different answer other than the most obvious answer are now spending all this time, all this energy, thinking of another conclusion. And you know what? With all these minds working together, they can come with a lot of good ideas that sound real, real reasonable. You know, but just because something sounds reasonable doesn't mean it's true. There's a lot of times we can come up with stories in our head and they sound very good in our head, but when you act them out, they don't always uh, turn out the way that you thought they would. You know, so these people are now looking at these apples and saying, you know what, you know, now that they've put this thought in their head of what they of what they um, now want this evidence to look like, because now that they've come up with a different conclusion, now it becomes a part of the heart. It becomes them wanting this to fit with what they have come up with. When you come up with an idea, you want your idea to be right. So now they're like, you know what? This looks like an apple slicer cut this because look how precise it is. A person wouldn't be able to do it this precise and this and that. And you can come up with all kinds of very convincing details to add to the story and you can convince a lot of people. But what if you find out that it really was just cut by a person? And then what if you find out that the reason that they dismissed the um, apple being cut by a person was for a completely arbitrary reason? which, you know, there was just no reason at all to even deny that it was cut by a person. Well, this is the same thing with evolution. When we look around us, we see design. We see design in animals. You see things like the peacock, and you, and you see things like um, the universe and the way it's set up and the way that um, day and night cycles come. And we have laws that nature obeys without questioning. The way gravity works, the universe obeys mathematics. These things all point to a mind. But because the evolutionist automatically throws away the most obvious answer, they are now looking for a different answer because of an arbitrary reason. They don't have a real reason to deny God. It's simply they want to come up with their own idea because they don't like the most obvious reason. You know, this is um, denying Occam's razor. You know, Occam's razor is pretty much saying that the most simple answer is usually the right answer and it shouldn't be thrown out. We should always start with the most simple and reasonable answer. And the most simple and reasonable answer to a creation is a creator. The most simple and reasonable answer to a design is a designer. There's no way around this, you know. Um, but like I said, people can become very convincing, especially when they work together and put a lot of energy in. These are a lot of people who are always learning but never coming to the truth of knowledge. This has been warned to us that people will do this in the future. We are also told that people will deny the flood, people will deny creation, and people will deny the judgment. These are three things that were prophesied to us, and these are the three main things that secular science deny. They deny that there was a flood, even though there's an abundance of information, like um, dead things buried all over the world in different layers of sediment. They deny creation, but the most obvious conclusion to a creation is a creator. 
and they also deny the judgment. Although we see that everything is um, taking the same trajectory that we've been given in the Bible. We've had so many prophecies that are still unfolding. One of the most recent is the drying up of the Euphrates River, the destroying of the temple in Jerusalem, um, Jesus himself coming, prophesied way back in Isaiah. You know, these things are things that, that um, people deny, although there's plenty of archaeology, there's plenty of um, moral, and there's plenty of um, evidence in creation that everything given to us in the Bible is trustworthy. Jesus, the most powerful name ever, the name that has changed the world and has divided the world, as he said would happen. He said that he did not come to bring peace, but a sword that will divide. The believer and the unbeliever is where the division is at. The believer understands how reasonable it is to believe in a creator, how reasonable it is to believe that our morals are not a figment of our mag imagination. You know, all these things point towards a creator and they point towards the Bible. They point towards Jesus Christ being the answer. Now, you can keep on learning, but are you coming to a truth of knowledge? That's the question. There's a lot out here to learn. You can learn a lot about a fantasy. You can learn about a fake universe. You can learn a lot about a game. All these things you learn about, when it comes down to when you're in your deathbed, what will you be thinking about? It's a lot of people who on their deathbed choose at that last moment to try to give their life to Jesus. They choose in that last moment to pray, but we don't know if it's too late for them. God is not fooled. And also, everybody's not even given this last moment on the deathbed. Some people die instantly. So it's important that while we have the chance, we put our faith in Jesus Christ and understand that this is the most important information. There's no knowledge more important than where we came from, what we're here for, and where we're going. Nothing else matters more than this. With everything on this earth has a purpose. The most important creatures that God has created are us. This is why we have the capacity in our brains to think of these type of things. This is why we have morals. These things all have a purpose, just like everything else on this earth. Our purpose is to love God, to get to know God, and to put our faith in Jesus Christ because he was not sent here for no reason at all. He was sent here for the salvation of the human soul. Something to think about.